So we had yeah. that as a mechanic. One of the unique challenges for Commander Masters was we can't make new cards for it, so how are we going to do that? How are we going to make that work? I we mean, you could make new cards for it. We came up with a really cool draft-specific rule. So in Commander Masters Limited, and only Commander Masters Limited, <sighs> we use any two mono or zero colored legends as though they had partners. Okay. Which is really fun. So if you have any what? legend, any red legend that's monocolored, you can team them up and have them be your commanders together. Which is really fun because what? you can make some pairings Why? that you've never been able to play before. In magic history, right? You can put cards sure. that normally cannot be Such a weird together. rule just to make so for really only fun, this really limited, limited set, experience. but okay. And I, there's a lot of fun mixing and matching. Of I mean, yeah, it's fun. It's draft, who cares? It's just and, um, weird. It was, a, it was a, something we came up with in design. It was such a fun wrinkle. And initially, we were like, is this going to work? Are people going to enjoy this? And like after two playtests, it was clear. This is the way to go. It is just awesome. And there's so many fun combos. And so just to be clear for everyone at home, this is for the limited yes. draft environment only. Correct. And it's only What's that card there? mono or zero. Brainstorm, maybe? That's right. So if you draft two two-color legends, can't you can't have well. a four-color deck. That's okay. very strong. Um, but you can play monocolor with two blue legends. You can play blue and red with a mono blue and mono red legend, and so on and so forth. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to you know, rule zero that to work in your other commander games, you can, but it is not a rule before that. So. All right, cool. So, okay, now to help make that happen, we did reprint a card from previous commander legends. We were talking about painted partner and all that sort of stuff, which is our next one. preview card. Uh, kind of a useful prismatic card. piper. That's what's yeah. Prismatic. Figured it'd be that one. Talk about the prismatic piper. Yeah. So the prismatic piper is a very funny card because it's one of the only magic cards we've ever made where the goal is really to not have you use it. Um, pr prismatic piper is a funny yeah. one because it's basically when you're drafting commander legends, you need to have a commander at the end of it. Your deck has to be able to match color again. I don't know if so. Prismatic piper is like the uh oh. The drafts they did for I don't know if anyone ever had that as their commander. Like a, a basic land, right? You always it's not a good commander. It. It's basically like crap. I I messed up. Back. But just so everyone out there is aware, almost no one has ever had to use this card in Commander Legends. Yeah, one I almost right. saw this used in Commander Masters. Only one, in one playtest ever did anyone use this card. Um, yeah. So I really would not expect to use this, but it is always there as a fail safe, just in case you're drafting, you end up with a mono blue com uh, commander, you need a red partner to pair with it. Uh, okay, you can bring in the Prismatic Piper, and it'll get the job done. Yeah. yeah. It, it'll be there. It, it'll be there. But, it'll be there. But, uh, you know, I think... What we found when we were uh, playtesting Commander Legends originally is people were really worried about uh, not having a commander, even though it, it almost never actually happened. So just having that, that sounds like magic players. A little safer. Yeah. You know, you'll have a deck. <laughs> Bring out something that will never happen. Like, I can't play magic. It's yep. Just, you know, not the idea. Now, we're not going to dive too deep into the draft environment today. Um, but one of the things we it's fine. I only get to draft like once. is that the draft environment is in many ways shaped by downshift as well. So while we're on the subject of the draft environment, uh, let's show one of those downshifts, and you can talk a little bit. Extinguish little all bit about hope. The draft oh, we'll uncommon. Yeah, totally. So here's a downshift of interesting. All of previously a rare night on the end. Yeah. With brand new artwork. So a couple things here. First of all, um, yeah, there's a handful of downshifts in the set. Oh. I mean, one of the things that board white about commanders, you need big creatures, you need big uncommon, and you yep. need board sweeper to help clear the board away. Board sweepers, not okay. traditionally common or uncommon effects. Nope. So we brought some of those down. Now yeah. across the board, there's not, it's not like every card is downshifted. We, you know, a lot of cards are just played straight at their normal rarity, but there are some effects we really needed to get in there, and board sweepers are one of them. So there's a number of board sweepers in the set at uncommon, mm -hmm. and this is a cool, uh, a cool one here with the extinguished all hope all the way from um, Theros block, original Theros block. Um, and uh, uh, for popper fans out there, there's some cool comments. Pretty powerful for an uncommon. Six there. mana if you're playing an enchantment deck. Because you get to put Ooh. cards in your uh, draft deck that you normally would only see in rare and some right. other set. And here you get to put your deck together using it. Um, so there's some there's some fun ones for sure. Yeah. Now it is extinct. I think we're we're doing your article on the draft architect tomorrow. I think that's coming out tomorrow. That's right. um, but that, you know that that's a very specific draft. Uh, is that one of the archetypes in the format, in the draft format? There's not an enchantment deck, really, okay. in the oh. format. So it's mostly just, it's a cool black sweeper. Um, it's, Interesting. You know, it's we could downshift down. Mm -hmm. But, but there isn't are there some, certainly some enchantment downshift cards are in the format. Commander deck? I guess there's no slivers probably in the uh, set. So. There's a lot of cards that are like, we downshifted specifically, so it's that common or uncommon in the set to help out with an archetype. There's a lot of really cool legends we downshifted that are really, really exciting. So yep. I can't wait really wait for you to see some of those. And I've got an article coming out tomorrow with a ton of preview cards talking about the archetypes a little bit and some of these downshifts, so stay tuned for that. All right. Um, now we're going to move on to trinkets. And before we get into this, yes, I know trinkets are traditionally one mana. Yeah, can't thing. trinket mage for any of the cards we're about to show. can't trinket mage for any of the things we're about to show. They're all two mana, but you know. Wait, what? It, <laughs> it does. I'm going to show. 
Anyway, so um, obviously you talked earlier. This should be called two mana rocks and how important they are to commander. Two, and so two we obviously wanted to include some more of those. I guess trinkets would be try three, whatever. Six here that we're going to talk about um, that are not oh, signets. as common inclusion. We haven't we haven't printed them as much. Okay, so, good. Not uh, signets. Let's start out with one of the oldest two mana rocks in the game, Felwar Stone. Okay. Yeah, this has some really cool new artwork here by Ray Galgo. So that is pretty cool. Such a great rock. It's I don't think it's mana. been. It'll often in a commander game get you all five colors, which is yep. pretty cool. And it's been it's just, I mean, foil a couple of times, right? Play, right? It's like an Let's arcane see. signet style card. And, um, you know, a lot of the other cards, arcane signet, for example, is in basically every commander deck. Bell War Stone gets reprinted a little less often, so it's cool to be able to. Uh, it's been reprinted like give it some fun new artwork 20 times. Stuff. What are you guys talking about? <laughs> new, like, it's the other five cards, like. That I'm really excited. About. The other five cards have. It's like in every commander deck they've reprinted twice. in the past. The last time was 2014. Five sets. We'll, we'll see if. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think chat, some people in chat have them. Yeah. Um, I started playing around the time that these were first printed, and they were some of my favorite cards. Um, especially the blue one. Yeah, and these have been asked for a lot. Like, people have been asking for these for a while, yep. and one of the things when we made the Commander reprint set is, hey, people are asking for this card for Commander, let's put this here. Should we show them to him, Blake? I, I think that's enough. Technically, let's show the first this one. would be... So, Pearl Medallion. Yes, oh, I knew those that was going to happen. I knew medallions were coming back. And Glad I got rid of mine. Uh, these were first printed in Tempest. Nice. Really, really strong. So maybe not all of them, but right. Pearl Medallion, I think, was up there, there right? Card, you put it down, it would, it would no, it down. wasn't. It was like $14, like right? Pearl Medallion. If you cast multiple spells in a turn, mm -hmm. it'll reduce all of them. So right. it, cap, it kind of gives you 18 mana. to 20 like now. Things. Was it 30? Okay, it was up there, to, but it dropped. Untap land spells to right. then untap your lands, uh, you know, or anything like that to actually generate mana for you off of these. So rituals with these. Emerald powerful, Medallion was 15. That's right. So these one. are cards that, especially for high-powered commander decks, are really strong. But even for just you know run-the-mill commander decks, very good. And so one thing I love about them is okay, the all five of them. I figured that was going to happen. So I was yeah, trying to get rid of mine. Here, yep. And they're way better in mono-white deck than in a white-blue-green deck. So yeah. um, really, really. Uh, That's the problem with them. I like them, but I always end up cutting them because I'm always multicolor. That's like eh. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I like I said, I started playing. Started playing Ice Age. Tempest was kind of one of my first full releases and. Um, I've, I've put these in every commander deck I could. They made sense. Not the four or five color ones, but, um, yeah, really strong cards, really excited. Right. So those are all pretty good value. And Rares. And I believe these probably are more from like are 10 to $15 each, foils and like after it comes out. I think so that's correct. And you get foil you etching, which is nice. Awesome right here. Yep. Don't know if those have been all right. and, uh, foil before. I do have the pearl. I have, I have some cards. On this stack here, we can yeah, we'll, maybe, we'll we can maybe look at the pearl a little bit later when we, yeah. when we kind of go through these. No, they have right, not. Now, of course, this is Commander Masters. Interesting. Sweet, sweet legends. Of course. Uh, so let's talk about some of those sweet legends. Um, we've we've seen that there are colorless cards in the set. Um, there's colorless commander deck. Um, are there colorless legends that you can try to build? With? Well, we did mention earlier. Zero color legends mm -hmm. also apply, and there are just a couple, maybe some iconic ones. This next one pairs well with Soul Ring. And I'll draw so, uh, <laughs> It does so pair well with Soul Ring. If you happen to draft Soul Ring, I can, I can recommend it. It's a little tricky to cast, but very rewarding when you do. So we put it up on the screen here. Let's see. Kozilek and I'll draw Zing. Yeah. So All right. Kozilek. I'm going to be looking up the prices on a lot of these, so uh, just to let you know. Just to get an idea. Love, what the. <laughs> Kozilek, nine dollars. Okay. Of Kozilek, as if there's like, no, this is my good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's had so a secret layer. Like the, the whole frame. And it's great. original yeah, this printing. Card is, is strong. It'll draw you a ton of cards. And while you know, there's not, you can't just add waste into your deck um, in this format. Mm -hmm. There's plenty so, of colorless ramp. You've seen a um, yeah, colorless soul ring. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean. Would I draft that? Probably not. You will have to play a monocolored deck if you do that because you'll probably have to That's just way too expensive. Legend. Right. So it's a little trickier, and but it's really fun to try and make happen. Yeah. In so, not that great of a mythic. And of course, makes sense it's mythic, though. Premier uh, colorless commanders, mm -hmm. um, for I don't know about that. In general, so it's a great right. one to open. Alternate so art. Buy, say that colorless precon I was talking about. It well, this just looks like a big blob. Maybe not the best idea to do that art for him. But okay. Another, another oldie, but a goodie. Uh, Chainer, Dementia, Dementia really? Master. 
Yeah, this is all the way fresh from Torment and kind of all the way from card. We don't really do that Dominaria Mastered. All nightmares on the battlefield is kind of unusual. Right. Brings things back over and over, which is kind of rough gameplay. But hey, it's actually yeah, that's just some Dominaria Mastered. Yeah, it's a this. ten cent like card. I remember right. building commander <sighs> way back in the day, and it was like, let's build our chainer deck and see what happens. So it, it's a fun one. Note that it does exile all nightmares. If your opponent happens to have a nightmare on the battlefield, this will kill. This card is junk. And this is Sorry, it's just junk. It's been junk for years. In the set. So it lets you make some really fun team ups. As you say, have a blue commander that self mills you. And it's not like they're making new nightmares. So. Zone, and you're just kind of one two punch going yeah. on. So that's pretty cool. For this setup, anyway. All right, next up we have right. another monocolored legend, another big favorite in the format. It's Krenko, Mob Boss. Okay. Yep, yep. His I mean, this is the premier goblin commander, certainly one of the premier goblin commanders. Printing. Start to get out of hand so quickly. You drop it down, tap it, you make some goblin Krenko, tokens. Krenko, sure Mob Boss. Mm -hmm. I like him. He's a great also, card. Three bucks. Mono red goblin commander. You can really build your mono uh, red one, goblin deck and go to town. Two, more three, around. four. So, um, this is. Card that Five. Is really, when I think of commander, this is like a, this would be a sixth reprint. Card, and I'm glad we got it where we got it. Yeah. Well, and it's another one of those cards that you talk about as has the foil etching, the pairing, the yeah. no uh, alternate art. Another commander that allows you to sacrifice creatures for an effect. Okay. It's not uh, exciting. This <laughs> creates a ton of creatures that you can sacrifice and do a thing. Yeah, we'll talk about the draft archetypes in my vi in my video and article tomorrow. But it's really funny to combine them in that way. Because there's yeah. a go wide deck, for example. Hey, Crank goes awesome to go yeah. wide with. But the sacrifice deck, hey, it's awesome. The sacrifice too. So finding those little synergies in draft is really cool and unique, and kind of only works with this fun little draft partner pairing rule. Yep. All right. Next up, now I, I know I've seen some some comments about the profiles, and people are a little weirded out by them. But for my money, this this profile on this next card is gorgeous. I look forward to this yes. seeing play. Yeah. Commander, modern, yep. you know, it's going to be a hot one. And uh, yeah, I saw this and I was just struck immediately. It's a gorgeous piece. Absolutely. So let's take a look at Azusa Lost. That's, that is pretty. Let's uh, see. And brand new flavor text, too. Yeah, absolutely. So talk Lost about Azusa. Seeking. Yeah, so this card, one, in addition to being two, a modern all star, is another like, classic three, commander card to me, right? Four, you know what Green likes doing? Playing extra length. Five. So, it's pretty easy to ramp out of hand. This will be the sixth reprint. It's a six dollar card. Nuts with it. But um, I could see that alternate art going for a lot more. Definitely, definitely more. And I'm so glad we were able to give it this cool borderless profile version. Mm -hmm. um, Who's so the artist on that? You know, another awesome. Okay. See. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I'll wait till the next one, but I'm going to talk about that art. They'll pick out their favorites and the ones that they like. The profile picture in general. The humanoid ones are very aesthetically pleasing right off the bat. I like the ones like Kozilek. It's just, it's so <laughs> It's just like, yeah, no, pose this way, Kozilek. Look over here while I get your good side. Uh, and we're going to see another one of those in a moment. I'll also say, you know, we've never done this one about to say before, actually. It's really exciting. Uh, the draft archetype for blue green is ramp. I know that's never, that's never happened. <laughs> it's a brand new kind of deal. And so uh, Azusa, very good at your blue green ramp. Very deck, good. So. Yeah, Azusa is good in basically any. Well, especially with only half of your commander, right? Because one right. of the problems with Azusa is you cast it, it's sick on turn three, yeah. and then on turn eight, you're like, well, I'm kind of out of land. It's a player. one, two. But when it's, it's only one of your two commanders, you're like, oh, my commanders are Azusa and Coslick. Yeah. All right, well, that sounds okay. <laughs> All right, next up, another commander favorite is Terador Ghost Seeker. Oh, my this God, really? For a bit. Uh, not one of the original, but you know, okay. in early on. <laughs> just because that's not worth anything. Yeah, it just was in the original. At least it's rare, not a mythic. Event. I'm hedging my. Bet. Was this user? Um, it's, it's rare. A really cool card. Uh, and one yes. Okay, that's, that's, that's good. The first uh, three color card we're showing off yep. today. So a lot of the format is built oh around the mono color legends because they're yep. fun to team up. Thirty uh, cents. Two color legends in the set as well. But we wanted to make sure to have. Ah, uh, the promo of judge promo yeah. five dollars. Cards like Terador. There are some three color cards in the set. I mean. As well. And I don't think he sees play anymore, really, right? Deck, the more powerful you can get because you just have more cards in your draft pool you can play. Mm -hmm. So in general, if you see a three-color card, that's a really exciting card that, that can bring you into an archetype, and especially early on in the first pack, you'll want to you'll wanna grab it. Um, and a lot of that manifest Would I earlier, first like pick Carador? This will cost... Okay. It's not as, bad. You know, the Great recursion. This card is just... It's a classic. Mm -hmm. it's, I like that. It's so expensive. Forward and simple, Gotta have a lot of creatures really die. Yep. And I still see this one played by people today. So it's a, it's a oldie, but really a goodie. Yeah, no, I, I have a Carador deck myself. I just I hate commander decks. I love getting around commander decks. This one lets you do that. You know what's great? Making your spells cost less. Exactly. So sign me up. 
All right. Uh, speaking of three colors and speaking of uh, non-humanoid portraits, let's look at Maelstrom Wanderer, a classic. Yeah, at least it's rare. Yeah, coming in hot all the way from the pl uh, Plane Chase 2, I believe. <laughs> this card is a blast. This is a, an all-time favorite. Maelstrom card, Wanderer. Right? Teamer, this is one of the most popular commanders in this color combination. The Cascade, Cascade, all your stuff having haste is just strong. And when you're ramping up in this format, this is one of those things you definitely want to ramp into. There we go. Um, hey. Yeah, it's just a, a, a strong card. If I see this, ten bucks. Pack, Nine to ten bucks. Like, you know, one kind of fun story. For rare, that's it's fine. Commander Legend. <sighs> see, okay. The very first thing I did was make what I. So there's this who's this? Where Benjamin E. Okay, maybe did he do all of them? Built out a draft environment using all pre-existing cards, not unlike Commander Masters. There's an artist called Mike Mitchell, who for years has been doing profile pictures of just pop culture icons. Six, seven years ago. And this is in a commander draft format very close to looking like his art it's kind of just aping his style which i don't like and yeah i don't know it's weird blue green ramp archetype so you're definitely like if they given him a card to do or something but i guess that'd be acknowledging they kind of just aped his style but whatever spice now the spice section has a caveat this a little bit so my i didn't Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. who's in it these days? Shout out to Trick. Um, but I still get to ask this question, and so I asked this in blue. There were some <laughs> other there were some other cards in here. One of one of the cards in this section is, is a personal favorite of mine. It's not uh, it's not gonna blow anyone's socks off, but I love the card because uh, it's blue and it does a thing. Um, and then the other cards are, are pretty darn powerful. So. One of them is not blue, but isn't like an honorary blue it's card. It's like we'll an say. honorary blue card because it, it like draws a bunch of cards essentially. Um, so, let's take a look, first of all, at Land Tax. Woo! What a okay. I mean, all the way from land the early tax. days of Magic, this card hasn't been played for ages. Wouldn't and just make sure you hit your land draw. I play that in a draft? Turn after turn. You'll never fall behind with this Maybe. card. Maybe. And the thing to keep in mind with Land Tax, too, is... Land Tax is always one that likes to come back up a lot. Anything's going to keep discard cards. Uh, last in Battle Bond and Double play. Masters. Super Still powerful. 25 bucks, see? This card has been played in Magic for ages. Because it always it stays at Mythic. It's a super strong card. And uh, for one white mana, it's going to draw so it helps a lot. at least three lands, if not six, nine, twelve. So mana. that's not a bad one. And with three opponents to choose from, you, and, you know, especially if you're not the green player, it's going to keep happening over and over and while I do normally make fun of deck thinning, it's like, oh, yeah, fetch land, deck thing by one, not a big deal. With land tax, it is actually quite real. Because when you're suddenly nine This is nice art, I have to say. I was going to say, I wish they'd done more a different I've art, but played games where pretty nice. It would have been awesome if they did the original art, no which would have been sweet. I got all my, but... every card I'm going to draw is a heater for the rest of the game. Yeah, right? it's, it's all gone. So. And for yeah. one minute. Can't do that anymore. One minute. <laughs> what were we thinking back then, you know? Not, I don't know. I don't want to disparage the people who are listening to this back then. But legends, yeah. Legends, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, powerful yeah. magic card. Very powerful magic card. All right. I next think we last one. saw it in, was it Battle Bond or maybe a Master Set? It's been a while, I, but. It's been a bit. I'd have to look I it up. I don't know if Double Masters was that one. Card. That card has been played in Commander since the Commander decks. It's yep. a truly classic Commander card and really sweet to have it back yet. Absolutely. All right. Next up is the personal favorite for mine. I'm, I'm like caveating this for a little bit. I love this card. I lobbied for it to be on this list because um, I like talking about evacuation. Um, evacuation, it just does something that. Like no other card does. Yeah, sure. It's like sure. Might, yeah, do the whole thing, but this feels uh, way more fair. It's okay, like let's rat. look at this thirty cent card. Instant speed. Returns all the creatures to their owner's hand. Um, uh, I love this card. Two bucks. Sorry, I doubted yeah. you. Evacuation. Well, yeah, and, and limited it's like, again, like making sure that you have access. I have a bunch of mana rocks and this bouncing runs creatures. Tokens. Great, and the fact you can Instant. reset That's your nice. own cards. I know you're a fan of. I think Mold Drifter is the name of the card. Uh, it is the it's name a of the card. card. Yeah, yeah it's, so yeah, it's, yeah. you know, I'm not saying that that's in the set necessarily, but it's great to reset your own ETB creatures. And use them it better be in a set. Uh, <laughs> personal favorite here that uh, is back. Yeah. Should be in every set. Also, chat, I'm not confirming that there's no Cyclonic Rift in the set. I'm saying this card there is. is no Cyclonic Rift. Yeah, that is not, you see that, not, not what I'm trying Cyclonic to say. Cyclonic Rift isn't here. Uh, <laughs> just, just saying it's a little understated. It's elegant. Yeah, it's elegant. I love evacuation. All right. Um, also elegant is our final preview card, and is this is oh, where I get to okay. talk about Canadian Highlander. So this card is pointed, uh, but it was originally designed Canadian for Highlander, Highlander, and I believe you originally designed this. That's right. I designed this card all the way back in Battle Bond, yeah. um, sort of so we had a Imperial Recruiter, 
and then recruiter up the Oh, uh, arena and I was like, let's keep this fun little super psycho going and let's make the blue one oh, so no. let's give you oh spell spell seeker, spell seeker. okay that's cool new borderless art that's cool art on the right Oh, I mean, that's cool art, but this is so much cooler. I'm sorry, that's freaking crazy looking. I love that. Wish that was. Wish there was a borderless version of that. Turns out when it tutors up blink effects, that's pretty good because you can use it a bunch more times if you're ephemerating. Oh, I guess you guys can't see my my mouse, but I was saying the original art with the whole tattoos and stuff is awesome. Spellseeker probably like fifteen bucks. You want to hit a wide range of commander players. Right. Yeah. So there are some cards that are definitely targeted toward the more like, hey, we're just battle cruisering magic into each other. Let's play big creatures, smash you. And there's some that are, hey, if you're a more competitive 15, player, there's 18 around there. We've already seen Jeweled Lotus, for example, which yep. debuted in the set. And Spellseeker certainly goes into that camp of like, any deck can play it's this. It's been card. an Battle Bond, a Judge Promo, and, and a Secret Lair. But if you were playing a super streamlined, powerful commander deck, this is a powerful one. And if your commander is a Nala, it is especially powerful. <laughs> I think you can like kill someone with just a Spellseeker and a Nala if you have the right cards in your deck. Nala gonna let you do it. Nala gonna do it, Alan. Got nothing. Alright, so that does it for it? preview cards, but we have some time left. Okay. So if you have questions the card about, on the table. about um, working on about any of the cards, we've got some physical examples here. Uh, go ahead and put them in chat. It'll help if you tag at magic uh, so I can see them a little bit better. Gonna say we'll try to new foiling. Them. Um, in the meantime, there are more previews coming today. Oh, okay. Uh, After this, I'll week, check those out. Commander decks are going to be next week, including on this very show. We're going to do um, our first Commander deck preview. We'll do a video on that. Uh, so if you head to which deck are we showing off on the show? I, I forget. If it's Corey, I bet it's the Planeswalker deck. Because it, it's got Commodore Guff. Okay, it is. It is confirmed the Planeswalker deck. Yes, oh, oh, Commodore Guff. Guff. Um, should we show off some of the cards here where people are dropping questions into the, into the chat? I mean, we have a bunch of questions. All right, so let's, well let's get to that. Why, um, why wait? All right. I should, uh, I should know if people are going to have questions right away. What are, we, what are we waiting for? So now? let's see. Are you reprinting the free commander spell cycles? We'll just have to wait and see. Yeah, of course they are. In general, is, is this what? in the set? We're probably yeah. not going to tell you. Yeah, deflecting spot is totally going to um, be in here. <laughs> so we, we've hinted at it. You're going to talk more about it tomorrow. But what are some of the draft archetypes? Okay. Draft archetypes. Okay. You want to just tell them all right now? Yeah, yeah go Okay, I'll, I'll go through it right now. So here's what we got. Blue-white is artifacts, so kind of like a go-white artifact. Okay. Deck. So Blue-black is one of my favorites. It's like a graveyard reanimator. What? Deck, so no. So a little bit of flashback going on, but you also have some cheap reanimation spells. You can bring it's, is blue-red cool. spells matter? Black-red is sacrifice. So, uh, what? Kind of classic black-red <laughs> combination. You can sacrifice some of those tokens. Uh, red green is power matters, so there's a lot of magic cards that care about high okay. power. It's a some little are different. Some power numbers, some are just having high power, so that's pretty cool. And then green white is kind of a, a go token? wide deck with you know, make some tokens, go wide, put counters on them, that kind of thing. Uh, go, those are the allied colors. Going to the enemy colors, we've got white black, which is token sacrifice. So once again, go wide, or sacrifice your tokens, you know, whatever, whatever you feel like you're doing with those tokens. Um, black green is, is actually a really fun one. This is a slow tokens deck. We've had the oh, okay, it's not value graveyard. Value some morbid triggers, and as a little hint for you all, there's a sapperling subtheme. You can Ooh, use. I like that. that one is, is pretty darn fun. Okay, that's cool. There is a green blue ramp deck. Yes, yes. it works. What else do you want? You're gonna, you're gonna cards, go fast and kill your opponent or oh, equipment or well, something. That's it's better. Blue red is spells. Once again, old yep. and red white is equipment. Now, yep. I God damn, guys. We Could you put the set. They're there. They're a little set. effort into the what set? Really, really what we found is people kind of draft their commanders early and latch onto their commanders. And there's a lot of sideways stuff you can do with those commanders. So the draft archetypes are even a little less prescriptive here than they wouldn't be in any other set. Because so often your real draft archetype is whatever commander or commanders you have, right? right? If you end up with Krenko, well, maybe you're just picking up all the goblins you can to try and build a goblin deck, which is yeah. certainly not a draft archetype, but it's a pretty cool thing to do. So the draft archetypes are there. They're cool. But um, really, I think there's a lot of ingenuity and innovation that's allowed in this draft. So when you draft it, you'll probably have an experience you'll never have played again. All right. A uh, lot of questions about Pauper since we mentioned Downshift. So um, I'll ask kind of the, the most overall one. I know you mentioned some downshifts. How much were you thinking about Popper's health while downshifting? Yeah, so uh, once again, I'll call out that I only did the, in, in case you missed it at the beginning, yep. I only did the initial vision design for this set. So it was the very early, like, first couple months of design. Then it handed it off to Brian. I'm glad they still think about Popper. Because so, Popper's a cool um, format. I don't think Brian, and I mean, I don't want to speak. A lot of people aren't into it, but a lot of people sure are totally into it. Popper and that's awesome. Downshifting the cards. 
With that said, I did look through the setup at the end, and there are some pretty exciting downshifts, and some cards that I know I'm stoked to see people try and give a, give a handle on. So, um, look, com every Commander Legend set so far has had um, pretty big impact on Popper. I think Commander Masters will also have a few cool cards for their time, too, including, uh, I don't know if I can say that, but there's, there's one card that is uh, finally in paper at uh, at Commons, and it's been printed at paper in Commons before, which I'm really Ooh. excited about. Ooh. So you'll see that in my preview we'll article get to that. tomorrow. Ooh. I have no um, idea. Let's see. Du, 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 du. Gavin, will you be playing the limited Commander Masters in Barcelona? Well, the funny thing about going to Magic Cons is you, I have very little time to actually play in Magic, because I'm very busy doing everything else. But if I have extra time, it's definitely what I want to be doing. Um, if you are going to Barcelona, though, be sure to check out both Game Nights Live, which I'll be a part of, as well as my unknown event. I'm bringing it all the way to Barcelona, and there's some new spicy stuff there. So uh, sign up for that, and I'll see you there. Might try to go to Vegas. Not Barcelona, though. Can't afford that. Pat, you are moving very fast right now. I appreciate all the questions. I'm just trying to keep up. Let's see. Gavin, what is your favorite magic card? My favorite magic card is the card Future Sight. It's an oldie, but a goodie. That's really? Great card. It's, it's Mine's Mana Tight, so I can't say anything. I'll qualify for the Pro Tour with it in a tournament where no, basically no one else yeah. is playing Future Sight. Got personal and reasons, that makes sense. It's like a no pass and cube for me, so uh, I love it. It's great. Yep. And I keep making effects like it, so if you keep seeing a bunch of play the top of your library cards, it's broad my thoughts. Yep. Um, are there serialized cards in collector boosters? Probably. So there is an article going up. Uh, at the conclusion of this stream mm -hmm. called Collecting Commander Masters that is going to have all of the, like, where to find this, what you can see, um, where things are found. That Look at that, too. Uh, there are not serialized. Wow. I'm surprised. Um, I did see, while we're on the topic of that, um, something that will be shown in the, uh, in the article. New foiling. There was a question about, are there retro frames? Oh, probably not. Some pretty cool art. So if, oh, you open that okay. up, if you open that article up when it some goes lands. live, um, there's some Elena Danner lands, there's some Rebecca Gray lands. Ooh, nice. Cool. So That's cool. Definitely check out that article to see what happens. I think they did that for Double Masters, right? One thing that I think is cool is when you crack open a pack of Commander or Masters, you have Master. goodness, right? You, there, there's a lot of cards in there that will go right into your Commander decks. A lot yep. of staples are shown off today, a lot of cool legends. And uh, my, kind of my hope is when you crack open a pack, you find stuff for your deck that you'll be excited to put in there. Yep. Um, so we'll, we'll go over this again for, for anyone who missed it at the top of the stream. Are there any new cards in this set? Are you talking about how that works? Yeah, so the main set has no new cards. That's it's so crazy to me. Breaks, although there might be some deep cuts that you might not know existed before, so keep an eye out for those. But in addition, there are four commander decks, and each of those four commander decks does have new cards in the same way that our commander decks normally have. So once again, if you missed it, there are four commander decks. We'll be talking about those more next week. But there are five color slivers, zero color Eldrazi, the fact walkers, and Ozzy that this is a straight so reprint that, set um, is really wild. And when, in fact, when we were building the commander decks, every we set like, what are things that has a ton of reprints. Support because it's is just crazy to me for, for that example, with that secret layers, so, all these like multiverse, the so stoked to finally bring it to life. So Lord of the Rings reprints, like what are we doing? Every set the commander set now. That you may or may not be able to answer. Okay. <sighs> the answer, but I don't know for sure. So someone asked, um, of cards that are getting their first reprint in the set, which one basically came out first? What has been the longest run between it getting reprinted now and it originally being printed? Oh, wow. Island. That's, a, that's no. a great question. Um, and I do not know the answer off the top of my head. I feel like it's got to be one of the portal cards. Yeah, I mean, so we've already shown off Personal Tutor. Personal Tutor. Right? And well, that personal Tutor is one. All right. Yeah, per Personal Tutor came out. <clears throat> its only printing was in Portal Second Age, right, which is 97, 98. Something like that. That's, yeah. that's a pretty long one. But the thing about Master Sets is sometimes there's, like, a weird common we found. Personal from, Tutor, like, 30 bucks. Goodies that we, yeah. like, dropped in for the first time. So I don't want to say that. First reprint. For sure. But Personal Tutor is definitely, that's a, that's a deep cut one. There's a, a couple Portal cards in the set. So. Yeah. Remember all these cards that haven't um, reprinted forever? Set on Arena. No, it is not. We'll drop it's like a rock. Uh, I believe it's on Magic Online. So there you go. Yeah. I know people had a lot of fun uh, with uh, Commander Legends. Yep. Um, are there any uh, Are there any new cards which are only available in the collector pack? So yes, that is a great question. Yes. So the collector Commanders pack, should have. Uh, do have some of the new Commander yeah. cards. Yeah. Right. 
Usually so how you it want, is. For example, the borderless version, uh, or so extended art version of the cards in the commander decks. So those can be found in the collection features, for example. Yep. So that's something you need to keep an eye out for. Yeah, and I'll just I'll just run through the different um, frame treatments and, and where you can find them real quick. Again, this article, this information is going to be in the collecting commander masters article, but it's great to go over here. So borderless cards, um, we've shown off a few of them, can be found in any type of pack. Draft right. boosters, set boosters, collector boosters. Um, there is at least one borderless card in every set booster, and collector boosters oh. have five. There okay. you go. Yeah. Lots of goodies. Uh, the borderless frame break, so that's like this this, this little card here. Oh, that is. Um, you can find those in every pack. Okay. Um, they are not in every, they're not in every pack of every pack, if that makes sense. You can't find them in every collector booster. They will be in some collector booster. Got it. Uh, the profiles, same deal. Okay. You can find them in any, every pack. They will not be in What's the point of collector's booster? Um, extended art. Commanders can Those. only be found in collector booths. Okay. There will be one in every pack. And then the retro basic lands, which mm -hmm. again are in, you can see in the collector every pack. article. Uh, they're not in draft boosters, but there's one in every set booster okay. and one traditional foil in every collector booster. Okay. Cool. And one thing, this article is going to go up right after this. Uh, this yeah, I've seen a reason to buy collector boosters. Um. Unless there's a okay. special foiling type, which there probably oh, will be. Great question. We were talking about this right before the show. Uh, will you be doing a teaser video hinting at cards coming in the pre-con? Uh, it should be out on Friday. So we're going to be previewing all the pre-cons next week. So we'll get through the main set previews this week, and then on Friday I'll hit you with some fun teasers for the pre-cons, let you speculate over the weekend. Yeah. So stay tuned for those. Um, so here's a good question that will lead to this. Will there be special foil treatments like the Galaxy Halo or a new one? So, yes. So <sighs> Here we go. Oh, wait, they've shown this. The Jeweled Lotus game. had one. Oh, it's Jeweled Lotus. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> what you see here, we, we, shown this, we showed this off before, and I actually took this actual card. I mean, they're getting crazier and crazier. Wow, that is right? gorgeous. <laughs> so, these are, this is a textured foil, Jeweled Lotus. Mm -hmm. This is a foil Edge foiling. etched Jeweled Lotus. So, you can see the difference in those two treatments. Um, that, that first Jewel Lotus was also the frame break. This All right, is texturing. Textured foil Ur Dragon. I mean, this profile. is what Double Masters had too. So, I'm guessing Box really Toppers well. will also have texturing. Was that what it was with and Box Toppers? That is a etched foil Ur Dragon. So, yeah, this, there are etched foils, textured foils, and regular foils. Man, how long till they start doing holograms? It's not that long, right? That soul oh, ring. that soul ring looks so sick. Yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. I wish you'd seen that across the table for me. Oh, yeah. Here is that etched foil pearl medallion. All five medallions back, in case you missed it earlier. Yep. And first time in foil. So first time in foil, yep. Which is pretty crazy. And then there's the traditional oh, foil. Yeah, traditional. Comparison. I don't know if I like that foiling. The cleanest comparison we have. It looks Mono very muddy. Oh, yeah. But it could just be the lighting. And then there's that cat from the zoo that we talked about. We showed that one at the I don't know, look. man. Foil etching. Foil. Not my thing. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's and nice. That <laughs> Gotta admit, that's pretty nice. Profile. Love that. Edged foil land pack. Wow. So cool with the blinding. That's yeah. Rad. I love how the how the little like little dot wisps in the artwork like light oh. up in the, the foil. Yep. That's cool. Absolutely. All right, let's see. Yeah, if you have more questions, you can throw them in chat. Once again, I was just the early vision designer on this set, so yep. I didn't make all the final calls. I don't know everything, but uh, I'm happy to talk about what I do know. To, to that end, uh, all the questions about the pricing of packs, again, that is not Gavin's area. Uh, Gavin is, is on set design, so that's, we're not ignoring you, it's just not Gavin's area of expertise. It's the same reason we're not answering most arena questions or, or questions like that, because it's just not where Gavin's Yeah, important. contrary to popular belief, I have no coding ability whatsoever. I do not code arena. I can't uh, <laughs> go out with anything there. Uh, okay, here's a question. What is the most recent set cards were pulled? 
Uh, ooh, that is a really good question. Oh, I, I, I don't remember exactly everything that made it through, but, but pretty recent. I think there's some cards from, uh, I'm I don't think there's anything from Martian Machine or One, but maybe um, maybe there's a Bro card in there, okay. or, or DMU. I, I, I don't know for sure, especially because a lot of them are common cards that are help the archetypes run. Right. Um, I know there's a Modern Horizons 2 card in there, um, a couple other places. So it's definitely stuff from the past couple of years, but I don't, I don't remember exactly, exactly where. Be a with commons and uncommons especially, we kind of grab whatever we need to make the archetypes work. Right. Even if they're I forgot the name of it. So. The one makes yeah. treasure tokens. Um, okay, I've seen a few one. questions about <laughs> the um, goblin. pre-releases. So, a couple things. One, this set does not have a traditional pre-release. So, there are not pre-release packs. Um, it's not, uh, you know, some stores may not run pre-release events. Uh, we have what are called preview events. So you can draft. Um, you can't purchase products, so it's not exactly the same thing. But um, premium WPN what? stores <laughs> will be able to run preview events uh, that are draft events the week before release. And let me run Okay, so they want you to do this in seal, but they want you to draft. Uh, so, uh, you can't do today is when previews begin. draft pre-release kits. Are July it's called pre-release for the draft. 20th, so that's the, next uh, um, the full card image gallery will be up on July 21st. The pre-pre-release with loading ready run will then be the very next day on July 22nd. So we'll get the full set, and then uh, loading ready run will do its pre-pre-release. Uh, and then the WPN Premium Store preview events are July 28th through 30th. So that's where, if you want to draft, um, select stores will be running preview events. And then um, the global launch <laughs> is on August 4th. So July 28th, okay. August 4th. That's the, the key release points. Uh, and then tucked in there, Command Zones, uh, Extra Turns gameplay featuring this set will be on August 2nd. So be sure to check that out. So that's kind of the case. All right. Um, and how the pre-release plays. Yeah, and I'll call out too, just because preview. it's easy to miss them there, that you can play sealed with this set. There's nothing wrong with playing sealed with this set. But really, it just look like a damn the, fool. part of the experience is. And so making these preview events about drafting as opposed to sealed made a ton of sense. So yeah. look, look at those draft archetypes. You get to kind of craft your deck with the commanders you get, get to draft. It's yeah, really sealed would be really hard. Also, call out that I believe we'll have some stuff going on with the set at Mess. Magicon Barcelona. Yes. Everyone be just playing so five color decks. If you're in Europe, over there, check it out. Um, be a lot of cool stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, we answered this before, but let's let's uh, rehash it here. Uh, will draft be in the style of traditional commander with a hundred cards or brawl with sixty cards? Yeah. So the commander draft is this time is done the same way it's been done in Commander Legends and Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate. You're going to draft three twenty card packs, picking two cards at a time. And then you, at the end of it, you'll build a 60-card commander deck, probably about 25 lands, 35 non-lands. Um, uh, your commanders do count toward your deck size there. And uh, you have to hit color identity rule and all yeah. that good stuff. Now, once you start playing, it's just like commander. Once you start playing, it's 40 life, free mulligan, all that normal stuff. Okay. Uh, and then the one thing that's actually I've often missed, and a lot draft. of people don't know this, there's a fun fact for those watching. If you're drafting a normal set, I'll take yeah, any magic set history, if just you draft five copies of a card, you can play all of them. Right? Yeah. If you draft six lightning bolts, you can play all of them in your draft deck, and that sounds pretty good. You should do that. Um, so in Commander Legends, <laughs> lightning bolt in this. the singleton rule similarly does not apply. If you manage to draft multiple copies of a card, you can play all of them. So if you draft three soul rings, I recommend playing all of them, and your deck will be pretty strong, and you can play all of them. So that's one small tweak you should know about. And that's just, just a draft rule, and I think, once again, Legends does, does some fun things where, oh, man, I, I never get to play with two copies of this card in Commander, but I get to do it here just in this, in this one-time draft format. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Oh, um, are there, we've seen three color cards. Are there any four color cards? In no. Format? Just went and find out. <laughs> I, I can say that we have definitely gone above three colors because we've already shown off Ur Dragon, who is five colors. That's so true. Certainly four color is on the table, but uh, yeah, wait and see the set. If I say yes to that, it really narrows down the number of cards that could possibly be there, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you'll just have to wait and find out. Uh, this is a question just for you, Gavin. Uh, future site, uh, do you like the original or the skull art? Oh, I'm original. original. That's what I qualify for the Pro Tour with, so. Fairies with a future site? Oh, I'm going to have to do this. Um, for draft, could you partner Krenko with Krenko? Yes. Yes, you can double partner the same legend. Just don't um, play them at the same time. All the normal rules apply to that, so their command tax will go up separately, and I would not recommend casting them at the same time. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, I, I believe uh, I believe you can do that. Okay. Do the extended art commanders come in foil? Yes, we just saw that. Yes. Um, As he means commander cards. 
there's very few colorless cards in the set, the colorless legends in the set to start with. Yeah. So you're not likely to end up with one. So they're not really a draft archetype. But I'll give you a hint. If you draft a colorless legend, you're probably the one to want to ramp to cast it, right? Like, think about the colorless legends that exist. Most of them you're going to need a lot of mana for, so Kozilek being a great example of this. you got to get up to 10 mana. So yep. I recommend pairing it with green is usually a safe bet, or blue so the game will go along and you'll hit your, your land drops. But, I mean, maybe you draft land tax and you've hit all the land drops you need to cast All them. the land drops all the time, yeah. Mono white uh, Eldrazi, let's go. Yeah, you could do it. You could do it. Uh, did you say the PPR was the 22nd? I did. That is, that I did say that. Um, Perhaps blue uh, ribbon? Can we have Scion of the Ur Dragon? I don't know. Maybe. Uh, let's see. Probably not. Uh, one thing I'll say about the design of the set is normally in pre-cons, mm -hmm. you don't put tutors in there, right? Unless sure. it's like a basic land tutor, Evolving Wilds, Cultivate. Because it's just complicated. You go yeah. buy a pre-con, you've never played it in your life. You play a tutor, and you're like, uh, what card do I go get? Yeah. Uh, one thing that's really fun about our yeah, draft we don't want the good cards is because you're building the Commander draft, X. You know what's in there. So there's a little bit more tutoring here. We've already sure. shown off personal, personal tutor, tutor, Spellseeker. Yeah. So some of those big tutor hits, um, or not all of them, but some of them you'll find here in the set. So. Yep. Um, Sign of the Year Dragon, normally not a card you really find, um, but could be on the table. I'm not saying that there's a reason in here, but it could be on the table because of, of that rule. Yep. Um, which of the pre-cons are you most excited for? Well, I mean, I, I, I love them all, obviously. You know, mm -hmm. they're exciting themes for me, but I got to root for my, for my boy Commodore Guff. You know, I've wanted to get yeah. Guff. Oh, that's right. Time. He's the, com he's the, the Planeswalker really guy. Cool theme. That but I will sense. say that in design, so I led the initial version, the initial design. I picked out the deck theme before handing it off to Corey. Uh, the deck that I actually led in the design process was the Slivers deck. So one of the fun things I got to do without giving anything away was finding all the neat commander things would be cool for Slivers to do mm -hmm. and then putting them on. So, for example, the, the face card, Sliver Grave Mother, yeah. has Encore. So it's right. a fun commander-only ability to grant your Slivers. Not the only thing like that you'll be seeing. So there's a fun one in there. Yeah. Um, speaking, uh, so I, I would say... I think the colorless one, but only because I have yet to build a colorless deck and it will get me started. The colorless one, uh, led by Daniel Holt, was the biggest challenge. Yeah, in my that sounds crazy. You don't get, for the most part, you don't get instants or sorceries. Right? You've got to do it the old-fashioned way. And I'll, I'll even let you know. I guess I, I'll just give it away now that there are there is at least one new colorless instant or sorcery in the deck. So that's cool. You can look forward to that. Yep. Um, but, uh, yeah, most of your deck is all permanents, and uh, so that's a very interesting design challenge. Weird. Mm -hmm. Weird. Cool, though. Um, are there any more cards from Portal being reprinted? You have to wait and see. I think almost certainly there are mm -hmm. cards from Portal and Portal Second Age and Portal Three Kingdoms in this set that we have, that uh, there's more than one of them. I don't remember how many there are, um, and, you know, there might not be the, the spicy ones you're looking for, so mm -hmm. I, I don't want to say anything specific, but... I love digging in those old reprints. Uh, we've seen Personal Tutor and Capture of the Vow already. Three so visits probably again somewhere. somewhere. I guess stay tuned. Um, you may or may not know the answer to this one. Art's not your area, but you might have seen it. You may know. We'll ask it. Uh, will there be any cards newly themed for Innistrad, like Personal Tutor was for Strict Table? Yeah, so one really cool thing. We haven't talked about that much on the yeah. stream today, Blake. But one awesome thing about the set is we did get a ton of new artwork. Yes. There's a ton of cards from oh, common see, yeah. all the way up to rare that have new artwork on them, which is really cool. And I love the chance to get Except that old artwork is so nice for personal tutor. <laughs> over and over. Um, I would guess, given that Innistrad is one of our most popular planes, there's always zombies rolling around somewhere that there probably are some new cards set on Innistrad, but I, I don't know for sure. Off the top um, of but uh, I, I'd say probably. Very good chance. All right. um, Someone has a Innistrad uh, art. Commander deck, apparently. I think you can answer this. Is the colorless precon an Eldrazi focused deck or a colorless focused deck? Yeah, that's actually a great question because we talked about this a lot in the design process. Yep. It's very easy to call it the Eldrazi deck because the face card is an Eldrazi. You've right. already seen it. And there are, of course, Eldrazi in the deck. But it is a colorless focused deck. So while there is sense. some Eldrazi stuff going on, uh, colorless is the name of the game. So I'm sure the Eldrazi are the payoff. With finding things that are colorless but not Eldrazi to put in there and create. So for example, there's a new card set on Akoria in the decks, and Akoria had some of those colorless creatures lying around, yep. so you can expect a few things that are not just Eldrazi. Of course, Eldrazi are a big piece of colorless, so you'll expect those too. Yep. Um, now, I don't think we've looked at any. Um, are there three color and two color uncommon legends? There are two color uncommon legends in the set. Okay. Um, I don't believe there are any three color uncommon legends. That would be a okay. set. Bit crazy. I can't say that for 100% sure, um, but I'm pretty sure that's true. But yeah, there's two color uncommon. Yeah. 
Um, and the two other uncommons, by the way, are often your signposts for limited archetypes. Right. So when you see them, you'll be like, oh, okay, I see what's going on. That's, that's the thing I want to do. Uh, is there any lore when you are in this guy? <laughs> I'm, pretty sure, I'm pretty sure there is, um, but I, I, I can't say for sure. As the person who just did vision design on the set, and then it's all reprints, I, I don't know the, the final art choices quite as much off the top of my head. All right, I'm trying to look for one last question before we have to go. Uh, let's see. This is, sure. Uh, is that a new room you're in? It's very cozy. I haven't got a stream in a while, but heard something about a new office space. Yeah, uh, we are in uh, our, our second office, I guess. We moved out of the Renton space. Uh, we're going to be moving back into a different. Rental. What's driving me crazy is the uh, books are backwards the interim, back there. Like that's non what yeah, psycho really does cool. that. This is uh, the game room, and this is a table that many games of D and D have been played on, and we gather in here sometimes, and we just happen to be streaming here. So uh, we'll be until uh, the new studio is set up. We'll be streaming a combination of uh, here and uh, from my house. We'll be doing a little bit of. All right. Every I forgot they moved out of their surprise. offices. Every yeah, week that's will be right. a surprise. Uh, next week, we'll be back here. I think the week after that, I'm streaming from my house. And next week, more Commander Masters. Next week, more Commander Masters. So here's here's the upcoming schedule. So previews start today. There are more previews. Okay, so we'll check out we just have the tip of whatever's the come out today, There's Wednesday, more so comments. far. Uh, we tried not to take too much spice just for this show, so there's a lot more cool stuff coming. Uh, if you check out dailymtg.com, there is an article called Where to Find Commander Masters. Okay, check that out. That Give credit to those creators who got preview cards. Where those previews can be found today and through uh, the rest of this week and next week. Commander previews for the decks, specifically the Precon deck, will happen the 17th through the 20th. We're going to be doing one deck each day, including here on this show with Corey next week, uh, where we'll be doing the plane talk. Go Guff. Go Guff. Yeah, big fan of uh, Commodore Guff. Um, other than that, uh, definitely check out Daily MTG for that collecting article and look for more previews. Okay, we'll check that out. See what's in all these packs. Yeah, I've got an article and video coming out tomorrow with draft archetypes, and it has a ton of preview cards. Like, I think yeah. 10 plus, 10, 15 preview cards. So check it out tomorrow. A lot of the juice to make draft work is in there, and I talk about some fun dash tips, too. So that'll be the juice. Daily MTG around 8 a.m., and the video will be loading up around the same time. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. The old glass of commander juice. See you next week. All right, there we go. Let's check out some of these preview cards now. All right, and we're back with the uh, whoops, how it is collecting commander masters. So we're going to take a look at the uh, what's in the 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 the, 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 the packs. All right, so Commander Masters, uh, whatever, that's what the you know symbol looks like. We have all the dates, which he went over in the video. See, these are the uh, profiles I was talking about. Look like Mike Mitchell. They're all, looks like different artists. Those other ones were two of the same artists, but still. Got the, the borderless frame break, borderless cards. We've seen all these. The textured foil and a foil etch cards. So yeah, there's the uh, Pearl Medallion Land Tech. Those are new on there. Uh, we have extended art cards. These are the commanders for the commander deck. Uh, what else we got here? Oh, here's the retro uh, frame basic lands, which you know we had with Dominaria Remastered. So nothing too new. So we got Danner, and we got Rebecca Gay, which pretty nice looking. Love love Rebecca. Uh, Mark Poole, always nice to see. Here we go. Okay, so where can I find it? Traditional full cards, every set. Full edge cards, only in collector boosters. Okay, so that's something collector boosters only have. And texture foil, of course, are only in the collector boosters. One every pack for full etched. Okay. And then one in 4% of packs. So, interesting. Um, what else we got here? So, borderless cards, all of them. Borderless frame break, all of them. Uh, borderless profile, all of them. Extended art commander only in collector boosters. You get one. I don't know if you'll get any foil ones. That's something we'll have to see. Uh, doesn't really say here. Retro lands, uh, one in every pack. Traditional foil, 
20% per, uh, chance, and then collectors get one foil in every pack. That's fine. We got the set boosters. Uh, let's see here. Contain, blah, blah, blah. So you can get all those. Okay, what's inside? Oh, okay, fine. Set booster, you can get one Borless common or uncommon. That's every pack. One basic land, four commons, two non-legendary uncommons, one legendary uncommon, one legendary uncommon, uh, infinite percent of boosters or a non-legendary rare or mythic rare. Two wild cards include rares, mythics, borderless rares, and borderless mythic rares. One legendary rare or mythic rare, one legend non-legendary rare or mythic rare, and one traditional full card. Okay. Whew. Okay. Oh wait, that was the boosters rated that. Get the art card, of course. Draft boosters, you know, same old, same old. And then collector boosters. You can get one traditional foil, borderless or textured foil borderless rare mythic. One foil etched rare mythic. So no matter what, at least it's rare mythic. I guess they probably don't have uncommon ones. Yeah, sometimes they do, who knows. One traditional foil or non-foil extended art. Could be commander, maybe, probably. Wait, what does it say? Extended art version of a card introducing commander. Okay, so one traditional foil or non-foil extended art. Okay, so you cannot get those in foil. That's lame. Uh, one non-foil borderless, one traditional foil, one traditional foil borderless, common or uncommon, two non-foil borderless, common, common, blah, 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 and double side token. All right, so there's all that. What else we got? Double face tokens. All right, and do they show off any other cards? These are just all the ones we've seen before. No. All right. So, textured or full etching is the only reason to get Commander Masters collector boosters. Is that worth it? Probably not. Now, let's look at these preview cards. All right, so today is the 12th. So, we have actually a few to look. So, at MTGJP got... Well, you're not telling me anything. What'd you get? What'd you get? What'd you get? Oh, they got, uh, what's that card? I don't know. Crap. But that card. Commandeer? Is that what it is? I say that. Nothing, nothing exciting there. No, thank you. Casual magic? Got. Whoops. What was that? I don't know. Uh, seven hours. Oh, I, no, that's Card King. God damn it, you're just showing me all of them, aren't you? Well, screw you. You, just, you messed it all up for me. Okay, never mind. I wish this would just go to where the card is, but you're just taking me to stupid Twitter. This, this is so bad. Okay, you know what? Sorry, guys. Since Magic doesn't know how to... Or what's he doesn't know how to... Do anything... To help out small creators, we're just gonna do this. And I will try and give you all the props I can. All right, let's start down here. All right, so we got that, 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 yes. We knew all these from the thing. All right, weekly MTG did that. Okay, so Cool Stuff Inc. got Wayward Sword Tooth. Eh. Uh, Regal Behemoth from Cool Stuff Inc. is pretty cool. That's a nice reprint. I like that. Hasn't been reprinted since Conspiracy, I think. Omnath, Locus of Mana from Making Magic Preview That. That's cool. Who's Making Magic? Oh, that's just him. Okay. Uh, I mean, that's fine. He's been printed kind of a lot, so nothing too great there. Shelter from the Vorthos cast. Uh, just a common, sure. Urza, I feel like... Oh, that's the Modern Horizons 2 one. Wasn't that just in... Uh, Dominary Mastered? Could have swore it was. Let me see here. Is it Lord High Officer? Lord High Officer. Borderless. 
yeah, literally just in Dunner Remastered. So $12. I guess the profile is kind of cool if you like that. $25 is pre-ordering for. Mythic, it's fine. Um, Mizzix, no thank you, but uh, Casual Magic did that. Casual Magic, oh, Insurrection. Damn, why'd he get so many? Did he also, oh no, that was just his thing, but he got Insurrection, which that's pretty nice actually. Especially if it's gonna be in a uh, foil. I think there's only been one foiling of it before. Oh no, I guess you have the original foiling, which is dumb, which is $70. <laughs> But yeah, there was Plane Chase, which never had foil. Commander never had foil. So first foiling since the original. Uh, it's going for $10. The foil will probably go for... Well, there's going to be a lot of foils. So probably actually just go for like 15 or something, I'm sure. Uh, you know, eventually you can go down more. This is just pre-release. Deadly Rollock, we knew that was going to happen. I don't know about that art. That is, that is interesting. Interesting. Who is that? That is Ron Spencer. Interesting. If you control commander, cast a spell without paying command cost, exile target card. Or creature, sorry. So yeah, that's it. That's a good reprint. I like that one. Yargle, no thank you. Oh hey, um Torrental Gearhulk being a reprint. That's nice. Oh, who got these? This was Low Run Run. Of course, they got freaking awesome. And it's, it's actually rare, so that's very cool, actually. Um, Yargle was from Living Grand Run also. Uh, don't know who that's from. Doesn't say. Uh, MTG JP got... Who do you think that is? I don't know. Nesting Dragon. Nesting Dragon. Hasn't been reprinted since Commander. So that's fine. I don't know if that's a great reprint. I have it in my eggs deck, so that's cool. Gear Hulk is also fine. Like... Yeah, five dollars, commander. Yeah. All right, and then today we got, of course, Power Stone, worn Power Stone. Uh, yeah, knew that was him. Oh, uh, from MTG JP, another one. Jeez, uh, Weeboo? Who the hell is Weeboo? Don't know. I was trying to see what that was, but it didn't tell me. Weeboo. Guess I can't. I don't know, but they got uh, Morphon the Boundless, which has a cool reprint. It was just a Judge foil, which kind of sucks for them. Sigh, fine card. It's a fun little commander. Uh, Fiery Confluence, Command Clattern. Bit. Oh, the Immortal Sun. That's cool. That's cool. I like that. Uh, Heartless, no thank you. Ghoul Caller, I mean, sure. Kindred Dominance, choose a creature type. Oh, that's a very cool card. How much is that one? Yeah, twenty-eight dollars before. That old art, pretty badass, I have to say. I mean, I'm sure they'll reprint in that art too, but that's not bad. Uh, Frostfang. I feel like that was just in a secret layer. Uh, no, thank you. Experiment. Nekusar. Totally reprint a ton. Don't know what that is. Obscuring haze. I don't even know what that card is. That must be a commander-only card. Yeah. Oh, this is the green one. Prevent all damage. Yeah, you don't see much play of that one. Is this Commandeer? Was I right? Commandeer, yes. All right. Okay, we've got... I just bought this. Damn, that sucks. Oh, well. I think it was like $13 around there before, maybe nine. <gasps> that is final finale of Devastation. Finally, getting a reprint of that. So that's cool. That art is crazy. So I kind of like that. Uh, Galta, we don't need. Godo is like a $5 card. Boom Pile, no. That guy, no. Rogue Intervention. I mean, that thing keeps getting reprinted and still like around $10 to $12. So, sure, why not? Riscard, no thank you. Oh. Piana, Nomad Captain. I feel like that just saw playing something, right? I saw it right. Piana, sorry. Uh, no, it's a 25 cents card. No, I don't want to talk about it. That's bad. All right, what else? Ulan Crusher, no thank you. Rogue's Passage, Battle Screech. And then a bunch of... Okay, forgot to give props to people here. So we got MTGMG, uh, Facebook, 
Bill Bill was Fired Confluence. Simone at Kira, Akira. Simone Akira was Chromatic Lantern and the Immortal Sun and Heartless. Who is Simone Akira? Got a ton. Oh, that's right, because they're... No, I don't know who that is. I thought this was a person that worked for Watsy, but... Okay. Um, then we got these, which... No... no, Nothing for them. And then they got... Spoiled. You know, in a bad way. Uh, Twitter. Just let us know. Galta. Good old Twitter. I guess Watsy's Twitter. Ah, uh, Wizard of France. There you go. You, Yahoo. Still around somehow. Good morning, Magic. So he did a lot. That's why. Good morning, Magic. Gavin did a ton of them. Uh, we got Skelgar, which I like. Not really worth anything. Got the Thrivings, of course. Ooh, uh, Augury from Mage Wizards. I don't know how to spell her name. And then... Uh, two's Augury. There we go. A buck. Never mind. It is a rare. Alms Collector was just... Was that just a secret layer or was that a while ago? Yeah, six bucks. Three bucks, four bucks. Okay, at least it's not 25 cents. Cyclonic Rift, we knew was coming from Tordcom. I don't know what that is. Uh, eh, no, thank you. At least it's a rare still. Obnixilis Rare, Angelic Field Marshal, Champion's Helm. As long as the equipped creature is legendary, it has hexproof. Durati. Grand Abolisher, that was just a secret lair. That sucks for people who just bought that. <laughs> like, literally, that was like the last secret lair, right? <laughs> yeah, $17, 23 20 Interesting. Mystic Confluence, Savage Beating, Sour of Discord. These are from Adam the Gathering. Got Grand Abolisher. Good job, Adam the Gathering. Pressstart.com, AU, got Champion's Helm, and who is that? Chronic Ducom, got Extinction Event, maybe, and Omnixlis, and that's where we left off there. Uh, oh, what's her name? Alias, Alias, uh, Mystic Confluence, Tabletop Jerks, got Savage Beating, uh, um, Sour of Discord got from Commander Tower. How much is that? Sour of Discord. Sour. Sour. <laughs> Nine bucks. Not bad. It's a fun little card. Hellkite Charger from Card Kingdom. Explainer Lens. Extra Planar Lens. I think I just got rid of my foil one. Uh, thank God. Uh, card King. Just get rid of all your cards now. Like, seriously, like, if it can be reprinted, just get rid of it. <laughs> We're going to reprint these things in the ground. Affinity for Commander got Fairy Artisan and Make Us the Wheel and Heb from Elder Dr Demon Highlander. Uh, the Maverick Girl Gal. Hey, good job, Maverick. What Aspirant and Wind Rider. Oh, because you you love Popper, of course. Uh, Brass Knuckles. EDA Trek cast, my boys, Wake the Dead, Wretch Confluence, Avatar Slaughter from King Cash, and Lorthos. I like Lorthos. There it is. Arch, I was like, is Archfiend of Despair going to be in this? Because it hasn't been since, like, Battle Bond. And that foil was, like, super expensive. I opened one, got rid of it. It was just, like, for like, 70 bucks. It was dumb. Uh, so that's a good one. Archfiend's good. Braids, no. Mine's a glow. Uh, from Nitpicking Nerds. Um, Lifeblood Hydra from Archidect and Bandit MTG1 got Joel Real. That's how you say that. So, yeah. So, overall, lots of crap rares, a couple of crap mythics, but I mean, Archfiend. Okay. Gotta keep going. <laughs> Archfiend Despair. $34, right? And 124 foil. God damn, should have held on to that. <laughs> 70 was way too little. But yeah, gonna reprint. So that's awesome. Uh yeah, and some mythic. So 
good mythic for them. I'm surprised that the um crap, what is that card called? My brain is mush because it's hot in the garage. Uh the goblin who makes treasures for how many artifacts your opponents have. Yeah. Um Fairy Arzen, eh. Springlands, that's fine. Should be rare. I don't know about Mythic. So where's a nice rare? Savage Beatings. Eh. Grand Abolish is a great rare, actually. Um, I want to see some Commander's Plate. I mean, it's a Conqueror a great rare. Uh, probably not going to be Swords, I wouldn't think. I think we'll see more of the free spells, like the Flecting Swat and the whatever the blue one is. Um, doubling Season? Probably not. If we have Finale, I think Doubling Season will sit this one out. Um, yeah, so some okay cards. Is it going to be worth it? I don't think so. If you're playing for collectors, which are going to be like, what, $60 a box? Maybe $40 a box or a pack? That's pretty crazy. It's going to be a lot of fill bads when you open like a freaking no mythics and you get mystic confluence as one of your rares. And you're like, oh, cool. Mystic confluence is like a $3 card. So yeah, like I said, I just don't understand why you're doing a full reprint set whenever Lord of the Rings had tons of reprints. Uh, the multiverse had a ton of reprints. The, the what was it? Um, the one did that have reprints? I feel like that had reprints too, right? There's just so many reprints going on in regular sets. And then you also have other reprint sets like Jumpstart's a reprint set, sort of. And uh, Dominary Master, a reprint set. Uh, anything coming? Doctor Who will probably have a ton of reprints. Like, it's it's so weird. I don't understand. It's also interesting to see what is going to be the breakaway and the textured. Because Julos, obviously, you know, stable card for a lot of decks. Uh, Soul Ring, will that have a texture foiling? That'd be cool, right? This lens here, will that have one? Mythic, I still understand that. Uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see. It will be a Cyclonic Rift like that. So that's where all the money is going to be, sadly. And it's like, yeah, they're going to make a lot of the cards go down in price. It also makes your set kind of hard to open and be excited about. So we'll see. But yeah, Finale, I love that that's there. That's been in a reprint badly. But also, yeah, all these cards that are worth value are getting reprinted, so all cards are going down, even though they're like they're already going down because of inflation and the economy. Now you're just reprinting a ton of stuff, going down even more. Hurts for a collector. I am a collector, but I'm also a player, so I do like seeing cards being cheaper. I just don't like them being reprinted into the ground so much at such a high price to open it. It's like, ah, it sucks. It sucks. And then like, you're like, oh, well, yeah, we printed this, but now we got a new art treatment. It's like, okay, I guess, sure. I don't understand, but, um, I mean, have they already shown the best cards? I think Jewel Lotus, I don't think Mana Crypt will be in this. Um, I think Jewel Lotus is their Mana Crypt for this one. Moral Sun's cool, but not that great. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like it's gonna be a little underwhelming. Like. A lot of these cards are going to crash because if they've only seen like one printing or something or six printings, they're going to probably go down even like a little bit more if they were like flooded out. It's like, okay, this is their price basically. Like Deadly Rollick, I think that'll actually stay pretty good because all black decks want that probably. They don't want to be like, unless like the person's like, I don't want to run that because it's too easy. Land tax will probably keep it. It'll probably go down a little bit, I'm sure. Kozlik will go down because you don't need a bunch of Kozliks. It's probably not even a good commander card. Like, it's fine for cheating in, but that's about it. So, I don't know, man. I feel like this set is going to be like a Comic Masters where it's going to come out. People are going to see all these great cards in it. And then a lot of them are going to crash because it's the first time they've been reprinted. Or maybe the second time. And then everyone's going to be like, oh, this set's crap. And then years from now, people are, it's like all just going to even back out. So... It's interesting, I think. Just wait on it and see, because this set, I don't know, man. It's interesting. It's interesting. I love Master Sets. Like, when they first came out, they're going to a little bit much. A little bit much, I have to say. All right. That's enough rambling. Uh, yeah, just wait and see. All right. Uh, I don't know if I should do my usual sign-offs. Uh, Twitter? 
Patreon, see you next draft. It'll be interesting drafting this. We'll see. We'll see. This program brought to you by viewers like you.